Your Excellency, General Director of Higher Education, Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology, Republic of Indonesia, Professor Nizam. Your Excellency, Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Indonesia, Professor Ari Fahrial Syam. Your Excellency, Vice Chancellor of Universitas Islam Indonesia, Professor Fatul Wahid. Honorable to Chairman of APAN, Professor Jilong Wang. Honorable to our local organizing committee chair, Andri Siawan, PhD. Honorable General Manager of APAN, Dr. Marcus Bacon. Respectable to the distinguished speakers, sponsors, invited guests, and participants. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May peace be upon you all and good afternoon from Indonesia. Our deepest gratitude and praises are for God the Almighty and the most merciful for the blessings he has given us. Let me also extend our warmest welcome to the opening ceremony of the 52nd Asia Pacific Advanced Network today, 2nd August 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, in this nice moment, we would like to convey our expression of gratitude and also give our warm welcoming because some experts across Asia Pacific is gathering now and will discuss some issues relating to network technology, the development of advanced communication services, and the exploitation of this resulting in completing new applications. Ladies and gentlemen, this 52nd Asia Pacific Advanced Network is currently hosted by Universitas Islam Indonesia and this event is supported and also sponsored by TAIN Cooperation Center, Asia Pacific Network Information Center, Comscope Internet Society and Indonesia Network Information Center. Excellency, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, to start with, Please be silent and bow our heads for a moment to say our prayer, shall we? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of the Republic of Indonesia, Indonesia Raya. Excellency, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to invite our local organizing committee chair to deliver the welcoming address. So please welcome Andri Stiawan, PhD. The time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
Your Excellency, General Director of Higher Education of Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology, Professor Nizam. Vice Chancellor of Universitas Islam Indonesia, Professor Fatul Wahid. Chairman of APEN, Professor Jilong Wang. Representative of National Research Education Network across Asia Pacific. Sponsors, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me a great pleasure to speak to you this afternoon to welcome you most cordially at the official opening of the 52nd Asia Pacific Advanced Network virtual meeting hosted by Universitas Islam Indonesia, Yogyakarta, Indonesia. Yogyakarta has been appointed as the host of APEN 52 at APEN 48 Putrajaya, Malaysia. At that time, we were looking forward to you visiting our beautiful city, Yogyakarta. Unfortunately, due to the COVID-19, we cannot have it offline. Hence, APEN 52 is the third time an APEN meeting has been held online. Ladies and gentlemen, fortunately, despite the drawbacks of the global pandemic that forces us to hold the event entirely online, it opens a new opportunity for many new people to know APEN more. APEN 52 is drawing more than 700 participants from all over the world. We are expecting to see new faces and new people. And for APEN seniors and veterans, let us use this opportunity to introduce more to our new fellows and set an example that APEN is an excellent platform to collaborate among research and education networks across Asia Pacific and further beyond. Distinguished visitors, in the name of local organizing committee, our most sincere wish is that the meeting held from today, the 2nd of August 2021, until the 6th of August 2021, will positively contribute to a better world of research and education. I urge all of you to learn, to contribute, and to participate in the discussions of each working group and get the benefit from all the meetings. Lastly, I would like to thank to our sponsors. None of this could happen without their general support. Big, big thanks to our gold sponsor, TNCC, with its Asia Connect project. Another sponsor, APNIC, Asia Pacific Network Information Center, Comscope, ISOC, the Internet Society, and IDNIC, Indonesia Network Information Center. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the virtual meetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Andri Siawan, PhD, for a very warm welcoming address. All right, the distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, we are now going to listen the welcoming address by the APEN chair. So please welcome Professor Jilong Wang. The screen is yours. Professor Air Nizam, <coughs> Director of Higher Education Indonesia, and Professor Fazal Wahid, <coughs> Vice Chancellor, University of Islam, Indonesia. All distinguished guests, dear APAN people, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to APAN 52, the third online APAN meeting. Since APEN was proposed and formed under the Memorandum of Understanding in 1997, it's already 25 years. With the support and efforts of APEN members and partners, APEN has become a very important community in Asia Pacific region for scholars, for experts, for teachers, for engineers, and for students. They form or related to national academic network organization to share ideas and experience of internet development, to face the challenges and to explore collaboration opportunities. Today, the earth, the earth is warming. The epidemic is still ranging. Cyberspace is deeply evolving and APN is also facing challenges. However, APAN always gets developing just because of challenges. APAN always pays attention to development of information technology. And it's reflected in every APAN meeting. Artificial intelligence, big data, internet of things, 
future internet, cyberspace governance. Hot technology topics have never been absent from APM meeting. And last month, through the joint efforts of APM board and the secretariat, the APM newsletter was released as a new platform for collaboration and exchanges. Stories, highlights, and updates from our members uh, partners are welcome to publish on the newsletter. APM 52 is hosted by University Islam Indonesia, an Indonesia research and education network. We'll have a range of exciting keynote speech and different varieties of program, including training workshops, tutorials, presentations, demonstrations, conference sessions, and discussion panels. Hope all of our attendees can enjoy our meeting and explore some fun of it. I also would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere thanks to APM Program Committee, to Technical Committee, to our local organizing committee, University Islam Indonesia, and Indonesia Research and Education Network, and all the chairs of workshop sessions and working groups. They put a lot of efforts in making all this together for a successful meeting at APM 52. It must be mentioned that's Francis Lee. He has been working extremely hard and very successfully as APAM program committee chair for several years. And he has decided to take a break from the role just after APAM 52. So on behalf of APAM, I would like to thank Professor Lee for his great contributions and achievements. Our sponsors, are always the most important to APM. As the chair of APM, I'm very grateful for the support from all of the sponsors for APM 52. Asia Connect, ASOC, Comscope, APNIC, and IDNIC. And lastly, I hope all attendees stay safe and healthy and looking forward to meeting you in person in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Jilong Wang, for a very nice welcoming address in this event. All right, the distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, we are now about to show you the profile video of Universitas Islam Indonesia. And afterwards, we would like to also show you the video of Yogyakarta, where Universitas Islam Indonesia is located. So enjoy the video. Your future university is the pioneer of higher education institutions in Indonesia. An Islamic university that welcomes all interested citizens, a place where you will learn the beauty of diversity while still faithfully adhering to Islamic values. Imagine this, you are able to experience international education in an international university with global recognition. Study programs are accredited and certified by various countries such as Japan, Korea, England and the USA. A place where you explore science through 8 faculties and 48 study programs that you can choose from. Where you can weave your dreams while enjoying collaborative adventures with global scientists. And broadening your horizon through national and international partnership programs. Imagine this you can pursue higher education in Indonesia in a private university that has a lush and green environment. An excellent university that is tirelessly innovating in various fields. A place where you can learn freely, whether surrounded by calming trees or inside the buildings, online or offline, beyond the classrooms, unbound by distance and space. All is provided to nurture you 
to become an active and innovative generation with diverse perspectives, which in turn earns appreciation. Imagine this, your future university supporting you to become an intellectual who is not only academically profound, but also spiritually insightful. The best private university that still strongly believes in academic freedom, encouraging you to express yourself in an era of fierce competition where contributions to problem solving are much needed. Its academic staff, as well as 107,000 alumni, have proven their worth, becoming Ulil Albab, who are able to integrate science and Islamic teachings for the development of various sciences. Imagine this, your university is located in Indonesia's very own city of education, a city with a wide diversity of stories and cultures waiting to be discovered. Universitas Islam Indonesia is a university that is truly Indonesian, standing side by side with science, culture and art, creating a harmony of beautiful colors. Now stop imagining, it's time to realize your aspirations. Are you ready? Because here at UEE, we are ready to show you the way. Yogyakarta is the second oldest city in Indonesia. With the 1001 history and culture in it. Jagalan village, there is a silent witness to the establishment and growth of the Islamic Mataram Kingdom, which once ruled almost the entire Java Island. There are various historical relics that can be found in the Jagalan tourism village, the tombs of the founders of the kingdom, traditional houses with distinctive Japanese architecture, food that is said to be the snack of the nobles of the Mataram Kingdom, namely Kipo. And inside the Kipo, there is a filling called Anten Anten, or grated coconut makes the palm sugar and it's so delicious. Wayang art that are still preserved. Jagalan Tourist Village is included in the development of three national tourism strategic area or integrated tourism master plans. The original inhabitants of Jagalan Village called the Kalang people to have the expertise to make wood silver and gold carving craft. No wonder then that this village has become a center for beautiful silver handicraft and is widely known to the foreign countries. It never hurts to walk down the narrow alley behind the wall that surrounds the cemetery area to see the architecture as a whole and the daily life of the Jagalan village community. Bantul, the harmony of nature and culture. All participants, ladies and gentlemen, it is now my deep pleasure to introduce you our Vice Chancellor of Universitas Islam Indonesia. So please welcome and join us, Professor Fatul Wahid, to deliver the host welcoming address. The screen is yours.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning to our colleague in Europe and good afternoon to our friend in Asia and Pacific region. The Honorable, the Director General of Higher Education, Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology, Republic of Indonesia, Professor Nizam, the Dean of Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Indonesia. I'm sorry, Professor Mr. Fathul, this is your time to deliver your house welcoming address. Uh, I'm sorry, Are I, you I can't know in front of your camera, Professor Fathul Wahid? I'm unable to uh, put my camera on. The host has stopped the sharing yes. of screen. The host has stopped my camera. So probably check the host uh, setting uh, because of the host settings, we cannot turn on the, our camera. Yes, I, I cannot uh, put my camera on. Uh, okay, so let me try again, okay. Here we are. Okay, sorry for the technical problem. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning to our colleague in Europe and good afternoon to our friend in Asia and Pacific region. The Honorable, the Director General of Higher Education, Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology, Republic of Indonesia, Professor Rizam, and the Dean of Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Indonesia, Professor Arif Fahriel Sham, the Chairman of EPEN, Professor Jilong Wang, the Chair of Local Organizing Committee, the CIO of Universitas Islam Indonesia, Muhammad Andristawan, PhD, the General Manager of EPEN, Dr. Marcus Buhon, the Executive Officer of TAIN Corporation Center in charge of Asia Connect Project Manager, Mr. Louis Yun Ho Choi, the representatives of the sponsor, the distinguished speakers, the invited guests, and all the participants. It is a great honor to me on behalf of Universitas Islam Indonesia to welcome you all in this important event, the 52nd Asia Pacific Advanced Network Virtual Meeting. I imagine if the COVID-19 pandemic were not around, we might have already gathered physically in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. But today, we have to hold the meeting virtually. Please also let me to thank the chairman of EPEN, Professor Jilong Wang, for the confidence you put on us in hosting this esteemed meeting. My gratitude also goes to Professor Rizam, Professor Ali Fahriel Sham, and Mr. Louis, Yun Hop Choi for the support they give and the willingness to deliver the opening remark, keynote speech and talk. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm quite confident to say that without any discussion, we agree that COVID-19 pandemic has changed our life dramatically. However, giving up or waving a white flag is not an option. Instead, we have to mitigate it and find creative ways to cope with it. I invite all of you to join me to stop blaming the situation. A Chinese proverb uh, tell us, it's better to light a candle than to curse the darkness. Indeed, the advancement of information and te communication technologies have many have opened many doors of possibilities. Today, the practices of working from home, electronic learning, and e-commerce, to name a few, are already commonplace and widely accepted without meaningless debate. I invite you all to not using a bird view, which is too high to observe the detail on the ground, but instead, we may use a dragonfly view with the multifaceted and colorful perspectives. By doing so, we may stay close to the phenomenon on the ground and grasp 
an overview without losing the detail or the specificities of each context. And in this short welcoming remark, I will share some perspectives that hopefully they will bind together our collective experiences. Firstly, I observe that ICT is a life savior during the COVID-19 pandemic time. And to convince ourselves, let's throw back our imagination into the beginning of 2000, around two decades ago. What would be happening if a pandemic like COVID-19 hit us at the time? I'm quite sure that we will get a very different stories, especially in the context where the reliable and affordable ICT had not yet in place. We understood that during this challenging time, effectiveness is much more important than perfection, especially in the inception time of the pandemic. But nowadays, we should re-emphasize how to improve the quality of our life in terms of work, learning, business, business, and so on and so forth. Our claim of emergency after the COVID-19 pandemic hitting us more than one and a half years ago may not be valid any longer, or at least less valid. And secondly, the COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated our ICT adoption. I've observed that ICT is a game changer for those who are able to adapt quickly. We may discuss about the first movers advantages. Here, the COVID-19 pandemic is seen not only as a catastrophic calamity that need to be properly and collectively mitigated, but it is also a blessing in disguise. For those who are able to creatively harvest the benefit of ICT, a good install base of ICT ecosystem may serve as a springboard for our future development. And thirdly, ICT has proven to open access to a broader audience. Hence, we might consider ICT as a liberator we witness that access to various useful services and content is made possible by the use of ICT, especially in the internet. However, we should not forget about the digital divide, not only between countries, but also within a country. Indonesia is not an exception. Orchestrated effort should be made to narrow the divide. I do understand this is a real huge challenge to connect all island in an archipelagic country like Indonesia. But the government with the help of other actors should do that. Otherwise, the advancement of ICT will become a curse that widen the digital divide and challenge the inclusiveness. We should make all effort to make sure that no one left behind. The effort may take years or even decades to accomplish. In a more specific academic community, broader IDURAM initiative to support national and global mobility and a massive ID federation development may also be seen as a subtle but significant step toward the inclusiveness by opening the door for resource sharing initiative. Well established an inclusive research and education network, RAN, is another important idea that should be materialized soon in Indonesia. Today, we in Indonesia have started the initiative to some extent and we do hope that the critical mass of adoption can be achieved in the near future. Once again, I would like to extend our gratitude to EPEN, Professor Nizam, Professor Ali Faryal Sham, Mr. Louis Yudhop Choi, all the sponsors, all the speakers, the chair and the members of organizing committee and all the participants. I wish that you all will find this meeting personally rewarding academically insightful and professionally relevant. 
And thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It was delighted. Thank you very much, Professor Fatul Wahid, for your nice welcoming address. Excellency, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, we would like to invite the General Director of Higher Education, Ministry of Education, Culture, Research and Technology, Republic of Indonesia, for the opening address, at the end of which we would like to kindly request the General Director of Higher Education to officially open the 52nd Asia Pacific Advance Network. And now, please welcome Professor Nizam Screen is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, dear Professor Silong Wang, the chair of APAN, uh, is your uh, Prof. Atul Wahid, uh, vice chancellor of uh, UEE, and also GM of APAN, uh, Mr. Marcus Puhron, Prof. Ari Fahrial, dean of the Faculty of Medicine uh, of Indonesia, Mr. Andri Siawan, the local operation committee for the 52nd uh, uh, event virtual meeting. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning to all participants from Europe and good afternoon for participants from uh, Asian countries. Uh, it's an honor for me to uh, come in this virtual meeting. Despite the pandemic, uh, the spirit of EPAN to host a meeting, to have the meeting uh, together, together and discuss uh, on education's development and uh, research in the network uh, is very much appreciated. So although we could not meet uh, in physical, but technology has bring us together uh, virtually. As mentioned by Professor Chilong Wang, the uh, coming of digital technology has been with us uh, quite some time, but this pandemic has accelerated us all to transform into a digital society and only by technology we can still continue our educations and research collaborations uh, between universities and countries so the spirit of collaborations in the network i think is something that we need to uh, nourish, nourish and flourish uh, it's very important uh, in this time of, of challenge in this time of uh, full of vulnerability uncertainty uncertainty and very complex uh, problems to work together, to solve problems together, hand in hand in uh, saving the planet and saving the humanity. So I appreciate the APAN initiative in uh, having this regular meeting. Uh, Indonesia has generated network or, uh, actually already started in the early 2000 with the inherent with establishment of uh, inherent Indonesia education and research network. Uh, in the early 2000s, we have regular uh, workshops, meetings through virtual uh, seminars and also telemedicine. Uh, and we continue doing that, although uh, not as intensive as it was before, but this pandemic has bring us again back to uh, making use of the network to deliver uh, training to have a joint sessions and actually it bridges the gap uh, between universities between institutions to to get access into the, the best quality educations into the best quality professors uh, from all over the world so i appreciate and congratulate epan for uh, having this uh, meeting and i do hope that the collaborations between uh, ran in the regions can be strengthened uh, and it go from strong to strong, uh, especially in this time of pandemic and beyond. I believe that collaborations is the key to uh, mutual benefit and the key to a better future, the key to sustainable development uh, for us all to do. As academia, I think uh, we all have the principle of sharing knowledge, uh, spreading news, uh, uh, and also uh, advancing the knowledge and technology. So the network 
uh, I believe will accelerate the exchange of knowledge and accelerate the development of research and technology in regions. Uh, so to all distinguished uh, speakers and guests, I wish you all a fruitful discussion, a very fruitful meeting, and a lot of discussion and uh, results will come out from this EPAN uh, 52nd uh, EPAN virtual meeting. Uh, with the blessing of our Almighty, uh, I officially open the EPAN 52nd uh, virtual meeting. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Professor Nizam, for opening address. All participants, ladies and gentlemen, Ratuh Jaro is a dance comes from the province at the western tip of Indonesia, Nangro Aceh, Darussalam. Ratuh Jarong is a creative dance in which there are movements from the elements of togetherness and are dominated by a combination of hand and body movements. Through graceful and enchanting but dynamic movements accompanied with poetry containing Islamic messages and advices in the Ajahnas language, this dance represents the spirit and elegance of Ajahnas women who have been known to be tough since long ago. Brave, never give up, militant, and very compact with one another. Ladies and gentlemen, in this nice moment, Ratu Jaro is performed to express our warm welcome to you all. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ratu Jaro Dance. Nabrikan sunan Jaro tahmumat mulia Syarat mulia Assalamualaikum Allah ahli rumahnya Menyempat kamu Allah katruh meteka Salam kamu beri Allah tanda hormat Jarota membat Allah syarat mulia Di Tuhan merempok rakan sebesar darah. Bismillah awalon pepon, lon ken suron baasai mula. Kun suron bak habis syaiki Wahai asaidi seot berata Salam assalam salam salam Waalaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh
Excellency Distinguished Speakers, Ladies and Gentlemen, now we are going to listen to the sponsored talk by Tain Cooperation Center, and I would like to invite the Executive Officer of Tain CC in charge of Asia Pr Connect Project Manager. So please welcome Mr. Louis. The screen is yours. Uh, <coughs> good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Salamat sore, is all right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm Luis Hano Choi, uh, the executive officer of Tain uh, Star CC, and uh, I'm in charge of project manager of Asia Connect. Uh, on behalf of Tain Community and Asia Connect project, so uh, first of all, and congratulations, APAN. Uh, 52 uh, on being held in the beautiful country of Indonesia. Uh, it's very uh, excellency and very fantastic nation, just one of the beautiful nation in the world. As a, by this chance, uh, I give uh, my sincere gratitude uh, to uh, the chair of the APAN, Jirong Wang, and the chair of APAN uh, 52nd uh, local uh, community, uh, Dr. Uh, Muhammad Andre uh, Star Siawan, and uh, all members of the APAN secretary and the uh, APAN 52nd uh, local committee and whole participant uh, in the world. And TAIN and APAN have been together uh, for a long time. Uh, building a successful research and education network community in Asia Pacific. Uh, this time is uh, just a 52, so long time. We have so many relations. We have had so many community communication each other. It's very fantastic. It's very historical record in APAN history. Uh, the Asia Connect project has been supporting so many cutting edge technologies, uh, looking like as uh, telemedicine, uh, future internet, and some uh, digestive measurement, and so on. So many, we have already so many, have many contents uh, for utilization via our networks. It's very important thing uh, to make a successful research and educational activities in our community. Also, the network and uh, Asia Connect programs uh, provided uh, opportunity uh, to the young generations and researchers to interact uh, with the global uh, students and the researchers uh, via our networks. Just uh, recently, our network structures has so many complicated, so many rings uh, in the world. So many nations already connected. So many community is already connected. Is so we can access the whole partner in the world. It's very fantastic uh, chance to uh, make the more relationship uh, in our society. Uh, unfortunately, so uh, these days as uh, facing uh, COVID-19 virus pandemic is very uh, terrible situation there. Uh, we never stopped, uh, but utilize the, all our network, network in pro and our human uh, resource to support education sectors and public services It's very important just so we can read together, uh, just, uh, but nowadays we cannot meet the face-to-face -face meeting, but we can access to each other via our network. That is the real network community. And that is the real fact of the relationship in our structure and services. Uh, also, also uh, we never stopped to collaborative research, to develop our technologies and applications to solve global issues. 
and suggests and uh, some uh, disaster problem and climate changes and earth monitoring and the natural problem uh, to global warming. It's very terrible. Just uh, especially our Asia region is uh, we have faced from many problem to uh, for uh, from natural disaster. Just especially Indonesia region is uh, so many uh, some uh, volcanoes and uh, some earthquake, earthquake problem. Uh, also some from tsunami uh, warming uh, to, to from the ocean. It's just in the global global problem to each other. Uh, this APAN 52 is the proof and uh, evidence how we work together, how we can find the solution together. Or, and then, so Asia Connect will continue to support our partners and the research and education community in our region. Although we are meeting virtually, just due to COVID-19 situation there, and our minds are on the same boat and being together. Just, just I mean that the same boat is, uh, we are on the boarding uh, in the same ship. It's very important so we can uh, support together. We can provide some uh, power to each other. It's very important thing. I, uh, I think I saw that. Uh, okay, this, this is my uh, congratulatory speech from me and uh, stay safe and be healthy is more important, uh, better than other things. And uh, until uh, we face to face meeting each other in the next meeting, uh, I hope so, but uh, fastly uh, meet face to face meeting uh, all together in APAN. Just uh, we have remembered the uh, sincere from history our APA meeting is a very uh, happy time all together in APA place, some nations, Indonesia, some other nations, we step to step, some, some change in our, our local area. Just, uh, I hope to meet again a face-to-face -face meeting in the future. Uh, thank you again and uh, hope you are well in this global pandemic too. So sincerely and terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Luis. All participants, ladies and gentlemen, we are now continuing our opening ceremony to the next agenda, that is to join the keynote speaker session by the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Indonesia. So please join us. Please welcome Professor Ari Fahrial Sham. The screen is yours. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon here from Jakarta. Uh, Distinguished guests, Professor Nizam, also uh, the host, Vice Chancellor of uh, University Islam Indonesia, Professor Pato, Professor Jilong Wong, and also local committee, Andri, uh, Papa, Dr. Andri, Dr. Andri Stiawan, ladies and gentlemen. So it is a great pleasure for me that the organizing committee to invite me to talk about the telemedicine. So I will, I will to share screen, please. Okay, can you see my slide, please? Okay, so uh, the title of my, uh, my talk today is uh, Continuing Breakthrough Innovations in Telemedicine Using Pentahelix Approach as a Strategy to Cope with COVID-19 Pandemics. Yes, I think uh, uh, we know that uh, we, we face in the COVID-19, but John F. Kennedy had mentioned before that uh, 
when writing in Chinese, the crisis is composed of two characters. One represents as danger, and the other represents of opportunity. So every danger, there is opportunity. Uh, also for COVID-19 as well. So we know by integrated in pentahelic approach, we can make a breakthrough innovations. I think some university in Indonesia to develop artificial intelligence and also improve our international collaborations. And also we are familiar with telemedicine. And then I think most of uh, university use e-learning and also for our practice as well, here in Indonesia, teleconsultation is the common in every hospital. And, uh, but we still have what we call it the social awareness programs. This is the pentahelic approach. You know, we as academicians, academicians working together with business and then the government support with donations and other things and then we talk with the media and then to community. Hope so that the informations around uh, acad academic, government and business and then community, people know about what's going on. This is uh, some achievement in uh, the pandemic conditions that we develop like in uh, one of our students what we call that develop in Corona applications. Uh, I mentioned that this is a student initiative from Student for Humanity. This is uh, applications that uh, everybody, everybody can know about the risk of uh, COVID-19, if there is suffer with the COVID-19. And from this application, there is some uh, updated informations about uh, COVID-19 as well. From our government, they uh, have uh, what we call that the Temenin, Telemedicine Indonesia. This is a, this is a application for teleconsultation from Indonesia, uh, from Indonesian Minister of Health for healthcare workers and experts. So uh, like uh, general practitioner can talk with the specialists using these applications or the specialists can talk with the subspecialists using these applications. Okay, and then this is another uh, uh, telemedicine during pandemic area that we know that the role of telehealth during COVID-19 outbreak. This is one of uh, what we call that the systemic review based on current evidence that uh, using telemedicine, uh, we can be used to prevent diagnosis, treat and also control disease during a COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, like uh, for general population, they, they, they can still routine control. And then we can make what we call the trace, trace, trace management. And also uh, by telemedicine, we can follow up. We, you know that the, here in Indonesia, for a patient just stay in uh, home, there is what we call that the monitoring from other people using telemedicine to know about the latest conditions. And also we can say that the, what we call that the risk populations like immunocompromised patients or mental health disorder, so they can use this telemedicine as well. And our uh, government also, uh, what we call that uh, have uh, what, um, the use of the telemedicine the primary care setting during this pandemic area, again, the goals of this telemedicine to how to diagnose, to treat, to prevent. Actually, we need this uh, decree from the Minister of Health because you know, I, I mean that as clinicians, we need this. Yeah. From this decree, we can work to use this telemedicine. I would like to prevent infections and then to use the e-medical record built by doctors because doctors can work from that home to talk with the patients using e-medical record. And also the doctor can, what we call that, to write e-prescriptions -pre and fill physical form. And then uh, in the other place, uh, the drugs will deliver to the patients. 
So uh, our government agree with this system. Okay, and then, uh, yes, this is another, I mean, beside to make for uh, consultations, there is also what we call a teleradiology and tele-ECG, electrocardiography, uh, and then also we can, we can make as a tele-ultrasound, somebody make a picture of ultrasound and then the other uh, place, the doctors can make a, a diagnosis from this and also teleconsultation I mentioned, and also other things. So uh, with, uh, 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 with these applications, we can make easy to uh, go to our patients everywhere. Yes, this is, uh, that I mentioned that about the tele-SCG service may be useful in this scenario, you know, that uh, and this study mentioned that the potential role of telemedicine in solving ST segment elevation, you know, if patients have a heart attack in some place, and then we put the ECG, and then we know, okay, you can start to give the medicine for this patient. This is uh, the benefit of the telemedicine in a cardiology uh, a patient or something like that. And uh, this is another uh, benefit of this telemedicine and effectiveness of telemedicine for chronic heart, heart failure. So uh, with this telemedicine significantly lower uh, using this telemedicine. So this is evidence-based medicine that we can use this telemedicine for our daily practice. Also we have what we call the facility for telemedicine in our hospital. Uh, <clears throat> actually this is a from a facility from Indonesia, Japan Collaboration Advanced Endoscopy uh, Training Center. And then we have six endoscopy room here. And then before pandemic, we make it regularly every month uh, in the 12th 12, 12 center in Indonesia. And then we have what we call it the live demo in one place. And then other experts can uh, make comment not only in Indonesia, but also maybe from uh, Japan, for example. So this is the way that we can make easy to solve our patient problems uh, using this uh, telemedicine. And uh, yes, uh, we have international teleconference. Uh, now we can sharing the latest medical issue and then treatment. And then also we can make what we call a big data research discussion and uh, with uh, telemedicine, the Pharma Center of Asia, TEMDEC, and also with APAN, Asia Pacific Advanced Network. So we, uh, we have an organization. So I think this organization is very, very fruitful for our uh, work as clinicians in this area. Uh, and also we have what we call that the joint publications of telemedicine and uh, from teleconference at the activity. This is one of publication of our publications uh, together with uh, our friends from Kyushu University Hospital to make what we call that remote, uh, in this title of this paper is a remote medical education in Indonesia analysis of 10 years of activities. We have experience in this area around 10 years, around 10 years. So, so we publish it in this uh, paper. Okay, and then uh, this is another achievement of uh, using uh, tele uh, med uh, telemedicine here, like uh, we can make what we call that receive online upon, uh, open courses. Uh, first, we have a center of e-learning, and then we have from this, we produce some, uh, what, we call, what we call that the IMRI online course, like our herbal medicine, COVID-19 module for student and healthcare workers, clinical teacher training, research and scientific writing, continuing medical education, adult nutrition and health aging module, and also uh, plastic surgery and surgical research methodology. So many things we can do. And then everybody can access this uh, e-learning. And also we have what we call that open courseware. So, lecture materials from various experts at University of Indonesia for students that can be accessed for free anytime and from anywhere. And also uh, we have, what we call that though, we have a joint collaboration of massive online open course 
uh, like here uh, with uh, global and national universities, Asia Pacific Rim universities, and also with the governments and industry like uh, to make a module healthy aging and herbal medicine. We work together with the industry to help this, to, to support this. I think this is the way that we can make what we call the triple helic in uh, our daily practice in pandemic era. And, but we have still what we call that issue to be tackled together. You know, we have a same pro we have same, uh, uh, we have still problems with what we call that limited, limited internet infrastructures, how to run effective telemedicine in low bandwidth setting to enlarge the coverage and also, and also limited engagement, the need for a more effective strategy to engage more user in telemedicine and e-learning platform. Thank you, Professor Nizam. Uh, can I mean uh, can help us and also uh, Professor Nijam always support us to facilitate these uh, facilitations and this is another problem that we must care also about the what we call that the potential security breach how to protect the security in research and also consultations that are exchanged and a lack of integrated collaboration so the need to employ strategies to engage the government a business partner and social media in nurturing the programs to ensure the success of Pentalic approach. Final message from me and hope, I hope that the five sectors, academia, government, business, media, community must work together in order to ensure long-term success of this Pentahelic approach. Expert from the field of medicine, IT, economics, and other crucial major must gather and collaborate to solve the ongoing issue together. Thank you for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yes, I Thank you very much, Professor Arif Fahriyal Sham, for a very nice keynote speech. All right, uh, the Excellency Distinguished Speakers, ladies and gentlemen, and now we would like to also listen for Dr. Arya Kekali to deliver about telemedicine working group. So please welcome Dr. Arya Kekali. The screen is yours. Thank you. Uh, please allow me to share my screen. Okay. Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, in this opportunity, I will continue uh, Prof. Arifah Riyal presentation. Uh, before uh, he already presented about the perspective of pentahelic approach. <clears throat> Uh, in the user perspective, I mean in the medical community perspective, and now I will uh, <clears throat> enlarge the pentahelix perspective in the engineers and the infrastructure preparedness. So uh, I will uh, talk about the Indonesia Research and Education Network updates 2020. And yeah, I send my honorable to Prof. Jilong Wang, Prof. Nizam, Prof. Fato Wahid, Mr. Luis, yeah, for this uh, extraordinary opportunity. And for announcements, this presentation is made on the contribution of my colleague, uh, Mr. Basuki Swadiman, yeah, the coordinator of the ID REN, and also uh, our very uh, active uh, telemedicine network of engineers. Yeah, we have a, a community of the engineers in the medical faculty in the university, which uh, has been uh, prepared for the teleconsultation, telemedicine uh, platform, even before the pandemic. And now uh, when uh, we enter the pandemic era, yeah, this community is much more active because we are actively asked by the community, even that the teachers, even that the, the medical doctors to conduct the telemedicine. Okay, and now I will present about the condition of Indonesia Research Education Network, yeah, because we know that in, uh, in this case, uh, I will talk about the condition in Indonesia, yeah, and also extrapolated in the international uh, network, yeah, but 
our Indonesian Rich Education Network, uh, used, uh, before we call it INHERAN, but now IDRAN, yeah, is already initiated by the several universities yeah, and approved by the Ministry of Science and Technology. And now we have like uh, 100 institutions and 150 members. Uh, the backbone is international backbone from Bandung to Singapore. And we also have domestic backbone, yeah. And we propose to enlarge our backbone, yeah, to the Eastern Indonesia. But uh, now due to the COVID, yeah, we have in, uh, increased traffic on homes uh, network and cellular network. And the National Research and Education Network, uh, we be, uh, focus our activities on e-learning. And there is a unique uh, condition of Indonesian Research and Education Network because we are built, built on a cooperations yeah, be, between the telcos providers. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, basically a collaboration again between the, the government and also the private institution. As uh, you can see here, that is a combination of, sorry, uh, Telkom and Indosat. Uh, Telkom in Indonesia is uh, the foremost uh, internet company in Indonesia. Yeah, and we have collaboration, and not only between the two big company, but we also uh, incorporate the other ISP associations. Yeah, and this is in Java. Yeah, you know that we have uh, one gigabyte per second. Uh, existing internet. This is a multi-connection. You can see in the <clears throat> we have international ring from TEN. Yeah, thank you for the support. But also we have uh, Indonesian uh, network. You can see the red one is the telecom cell, and the other one is the Indosat. But we also have the other support. Yeah, and this is the uh, yeah, yeah as. Uh, you know that Indonesia is a very diverse, yeah, as uh, Mr. Lewis uh, previously said that, yeah, this is a very unique condition of very diverse islands. Yeah, yeah, it's very uh, difficult and maybe complicated to manage the internet uh, co uh, connection in Indonesia. But yet in this condition, uh, especially in the pandemic era, <clears throat> we have our momentum, yeah, our momentum to increase the capacity because the need is bigger, yeah? the need is increasing. Uh, this is, for example, the fiber optics condition in Indonesia. Yeah, but uh, due to the online learning in COVID-19 in 2020, we have uh, so many institutions, not only higher education, not only in university, but also school. School were going online. We are using so many platforms uh, before, Pandemic, we, the engineers, uh, who is uh, so familiar with the Zoom, Microsoft Teams, uh, and another platform, but now everyone can use it. Yeah, That's because of what? Because of the need. Yeah, Now, not only young students, even old teachers must learn how to use Zoom. Yeah, But it increased the traffic of internet, even from home. Yeah, And then we have a problem, the network access, the internet quota. Uh, usually one Zoom of uh, one, uh, one hour of teleconference, maybe at least consume like one gigabyte. So it will be a problem because not all of the students can have the access of uh, internet, even the wired one or maybe the cellular one, yeah? So <clears throat> like for example, Indonesia 50 gigabytes uh, required cost like $5 to $10. I don't know what, uh, happen in your country, but this is the cost of our internet in our country. And that's why uh, the Ministry of Education support us, yeah, regard, uh, because of this condition of pandemic, we have so many uh, subsidy, yeah, we have so many assistance, like uh, we have a package of uh, internet assistance, yeah, because in average, it's required like 64 until 100 gigabytes. We have so many uh, internet assistance from the Ministry of Education. <clears throat> and also access to learn uh, online learning, yeah. Uh, we have uh, national, <clears throat> uh, we, we need to make uh, uh, student and teacher familiar to use the learning management system. Like now we have, uh, we use the WUFA for our conference, but 
in their effectivity. Maybe they use Moodle, maybe they use uh, learning management system. Yeah, they also need to be familiar with that. Yeah, and they also need to be prepared about the condition of the internet. Uh, the problem is, yeah, we have no peering of uh, sharing uh, platform of Zoom or Google Meet. Yeah, uh, no LMS peering with the national RIN, national RAN. So <clears throat> because of this, yeah, we propose for the continuation, yeah, for the internet access in Indonesia because uh, nowadays we currently using the cellular providers. As you can see now, the, the fiber optic connection is, cannot cover all of Indonesia. So we rely most on the cellular providers, but it's still good enough yeah, because uh, we connected uh, some of the big cities in Indonesia. And in 2020, uh, the traffic from home yeah, is increasing. Yeah? And, but still, we have uh, limited access in suburban and rural area. As you can see, this is the report uh, that in a big city in Indonesia, the average is 10 uh, until 20 megabytes per second. Uh, and in the cities, maybe it decrease and it even more decrease in the rural area. It will become a problematic uh, to cover, yeah, to cover the education that for not only for students, but because we have uh, the healthcare workers in the in the suburban and even in a remote area, uh, they need to also have a, like a teleconsultation like Prof. Ari mentioned before. So uh, the problem of this access must be, uh, must be solved. And we also need to create a solution about the platform which is uh, very, very uh, internet friendly, which is do not consume too many gigabytes, too many uh, in, uh, internet access. So that kind of, innovation that we need yeah because uh with this kind of this kind of infrastructure condition maybe uh the solution from the technology from the application will help more <clears throat> and yeah this is still the proposal yeah appearing the cellular provider for education yeah uh, because we also know that uh, nowadays the private uh, telecommunication uh, uh, give us so many support, so many assistance in providing uh, internet access, and we want uh, this kind of uh, assistance will be continue, yeah, and also collaborated with the Indonesian uh, uh, Research and Education Network, <clears throat> because now the Indonesian Research Education Network probably can be optimized for the uh, connection between university but the connection between users for the students yeah we still rely on the uh, cellular network yeah but this is also important because uh, nowadays we have uh, so many activities uh, big data analysis teleconsultation telemedicine uh, between university which is using the id ren facility and for future for future, uh, due to COVID-19, yeah, we need to, because we know that the network access is important, uh, online learning will be much, much more established in the future. Everyone will be familiar with using the platform of uh, Moodle or maybe the platform of the <clears throat> teleconference. Uh, so building collaboration for distribution and access of network is important. And support of telemedicine is also essential. Uh, so we need to develop access to deploy affordable access to students and staff, and also for not only for the teaching staff, but also for the support system staff, like the administration and like the engineers, yeah, the IT technician staff that because uh, those are the important uh, component of the uh, telemedicine, yeah. Uh, and we need to do whatever it takes to whatever uh, creativity or innovation that we can uh, produce to reduce the cost of access. <clears throat> and then we develop the peering with our collaborator, like uh, Professor Ari mentioned before, this is the uh, multi-collaboration between teachers, doctors, engineers, a hospital, ministry, and industry. And then after we have the success story, so we can also involve the media. <clears throat> 
this is only the reminder that we have a beautiful uh, telemedicine uh, workshop previously by Prof. Suzy Sumizu in, and Prof. Tomohiko in TAMDEC. We also need to make this continue because our activity is increasing and after pandemic, it's still increasing yeah, because uh, we have uh, so many activities still uh, going on, yeah, even in the pandemic, like uh, the teleconference between the neurology uh, experts uh, between Indonesia and Japan. So this kind of activity <clears throat> is need to be maintained. Yeah. So we need to maintain our energy, maintain our optimistic and also the creativity like uh, Prof. Ari mentioned before, this is an uh, opportunity behind crisis. <clears throat> so I think that's all for uh, my presentation. So thank you. <clears throat> Back to you again, moderators. Thank you very much, Dr. Arya, for delivering very nice presentation in this event. All right, uh, the Excellency, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen. So this is the end of the opening ceremony. But after this, we will join for the social time. Thus, we kindly invite all the participants to go to the special chat. The link is already sent by the committee in your chat box. And please kindly check and also access the link to join the special chat. All right, all participants, ladies and gentlemen. So this is the last of the opening ceremony of 52nd Asia Pacific Advanced Network. Thank you very much for your attention and also participations in this event. On behalf of the committees of this event, we would like to apologize for any shortcomings and also oversight during the opening ceremony. Good luck and we hope that you enjoy the whole conference. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Since the launch of TAIN Initiative in 2001, TAIN has 